let's talk about Federalist 51. If Federalist 10 was Madison's discussion of the theory behind the Constitution, then Federalist 51 was his discussion of the mechanics behind the Constitution. So in both Federalist papers, Madison is discussing how the Constitution can prevent tyranny. And here he really gets into the nitty gritty of what specific parts of the Constitution do this. And he discusses primarily the separation of powers within the federal government. So if you recall, the Constitution created three branches in the federal government, the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. And these three branches of government have their own set of powers, right? So we have this sort of national power, power of the Constitution. And that power is separated among these three branches. So each branch has access to some of the power, but not all of it. Drawing very much on de Tocqueville's idea of clearly outlining the responsibilities of different offices of the government. Now, in separating the power, what we've done is we've created a system that allows for balancing of the forces of government, so to speak, right? Drawing on this Newtonian idea that every force should have an equal and opposite force counteracting it. Now, in the federal government, that means that every power can ultimately be checked and balanced out by another power. For example, Congress can pass laws, but the executive can veto those laws. So Congress writes a bill, sort of a law before it actually gets passed, and they debate and discuss and say, yes, we like this, and they pass the bill. Now the bill goes to the president. The president can sign it and say, yes, I agree with you, Congress, this should be a law, and ultimately becomes a law. But the president can also say, no, Congress, I don't agree, and veto it. And that allows the president to check Congress's power. So we can see that that's balancing this power. Congress can't become too tyrannical, can't pass too many laws because the president can stop them. Now, what happens if the president just vetoes everything? Congress is like, gosh, you're becoming a tyrant now, Mr. President. Well, the Congress can override a presidential veto. It's not as easy as it is for them to pass, to over, it's not as easy for them to override a veto as it is to pass a law, but they can do it. And we'll talk more about this process when we talk about um, lawmaking when in our lesson lessons, I should say, on Congress. Now, this idea is, again, checks and balances. The president can check Congress, Congress can check the president. We also bring in the judicial branch in the same way as um, you've certainly read about for this week and will continue to read about as we talk about the three branches of government specifically and separately. Now, this idea of balancing powers of counteracting forces is animated by a sort of underlying principle, principle that is similar to, among others, Adam Smith's discussion of competition, right? Each branch is in competition with each other. They're competing for power, for access to the same power. Why are they competing? Well, because as Madison says, they're ambitious. Each branch wants more power. They have ambition and ambition will check ambition. One branch is ambitious, they want more power, but the other branches are ambitious too, and they want more power. So Congress is gonna wanna seize more power, but the president is too. So Congress is going to stop the president from taking too much power. The president is gonna stop Congress from taking too much power because each of them would like not only to gain more power, but to guard their own. And since all the power stems from the constitution, there's only so much they can seize. So the president wants to take more power. They're ultimately taking it away from Congress or the judicial branch. And those two branches don't want to lose power. So ambition checks ambition. Now there's another way that the constitution helps implement these ideas, helps ambition check ambition. So we have this division of power, or I should say separation of power within the federal government, then this national government. But we also have the division of power among two levels of government. So we have federalism. We have the national government and state governments. And we'll talk more about the federal system next week. But for now, 
What we need to know is that states all of a sudden are being given a lot, given power. This is drawing on what we learned about in the Articles of Confederation, where states had power, but ultimately going back just a little bit to an idea of a national government to help solve coordination problems. So when we were part of Britain, the colonies did not have very much power. Home rule could easily be taken away by the Crown and Parliament, as we saw. So we didn't have really colonial governments that had all that much power. They only had the power that was sort of temporarily granted to them by the Crown and by Parliament. But states have power given to them permanently by the Constitution. Now, we have this national government to help solve the coordination issues we saw under the Articles of Confederation, but we kept states there. We kept states having power to help keep that federal government in check, to make sure that as a unit, the president, Congress, and judicial branch all together did not become tyrannical, right? So they're busy checking and balancing each other, stopping, e stopping any one branch from becoming too tyrannical, but what's to stop the national government from becoming tyrannical? That's really the states. And their ambition checks the federal government's ambition, but the federal government's ambition is going to check the state's ambition, and make sure we don't end up with the states having too much power and ultimately going back to the chaos of the Articles of Confederation. So we can see how the separation of powers within the federal government and the division of power in our federal system between the national and state governments really helped keep a check on tyranny, to stop tyranny of the minority and tyranny of the majority, and ultimately create a government that would protect our rights, at least according to Madison's argument in Federalist 51.